so this question is about um, sl skipping sl hunting there was a question about um, shripal probably asked it related to sls right so liquidity uh, how liquidity plays a role so first of all if you try to understand this concept you have to first understand how the market liquidity how the market operates right market is nothing but a mechanism for buyers and sellers to come and agree on a price it's as simple as that what do you see in an order book you see a limit order book on the buy side and a sell side that means if the price is currently 100 rupees then a buyer and seller is available at 100 rupees and then people are willing to sell above 100 101 102 103 104 and people are willing to buy at 99, 98, 97 below it. So that's how that that becomes your bids. Under the price, it becomes bids. Uh, uh, over the current limit price becomes ask. Ask is means you want to sell at that price. You want to ask that price. Bid is you want to bid that price to buy the buy the underlying. Right? So this is this is how order book is created. Now let's think about SLs and how how they work, right? So first of all, first of all, the thing to notice the way NSE works is all the stop losses, none of the stop losses are visible to the market participants. Let me first tell you that. So NSE maintains a separate book uh, on which it all your stop loss orders goes into that book and they are not marketable to the market. Nobody knows where the SLs are placed. The argument, the concept that big players know where the SLs are, they are hunting for it, is not very well founded purely on the basis of the fact that the SLs are not known. They're not very well, you know, they're not lit or they're not visible to the participants. So in absence of that information, any participant, sophisticated, non-sophisticated, can create a model or create an estimate or probability estimate of where the SLs might be. So for example, if you're a chart trader, you might say, okay, this is where support and resistances are. A lot of people might have kept their SLs at round numbers, at SL, at swing high, swing lows. So you create an estimate, right? You don't know for sure whether the SLs are there or not, but you create an estimate, you create a probability forecast in your mind looking at a chart where the SLs might be. Similar way, you can use the quantitative data. You can use any kind of data which is coming in the market, any kind of knowledge that you have about market participants, and you can create a probabilistic forecast or a model which can tell you probably this is where the SLs might be if you are if you are into that kind of business, right? So you can do that. Now, does that mean it's 100% true? No. Does that mean it will always be correct? No, it's just a model. And when the new data comes in, things may change, right? Now, so to say that market is doing SL hunting, usually if you think about it, let's say, let's say, you know, we buy that argument that uh, markets, somebody has predicted that there are a lot of SLs at 150 rupees and I want to profit from it if I'm a big institution. How will, let's think about how will you profit from it, right? The way you can profit one way is that you buy it when the market is at 140, you start buying at 140 so that when the SL said there's a liquidity cascade, and the market will go to 200 and I'll be able to sell at 200. That's one way. But Usme, the, the one big challenge is that you are buying at 140 means you have to absorb the liquidity available between 140 and 150 to able for able to for to be able to hit those prices there so that there's a cascade available. So let's think again about it. Let's say one unit of asset is available between 140 and 150, one unit at a time. So if you're if you're buying all the units, so you're paying 140, 141, 142, 143, and so on up till 150. Your average price, so let's say 10 units will come out to 145, okay? So you say you you bought at 145, 10 units, so you've paid 1450. It could be rupees, dollars, whatever you want to think about. Now, let's say there are SLs, but there are only two SLs, and they might hit, like so if they're SLs, they are willing to buy, but there's nobody willing to sell. You have bought at 145, SLs hit, there's nobody willing to sell it, go to 160. When suddenly the market comes back, the liquidity comes in, the market price drops to 145 or 150, uh, whatever the SL was hit, you are probably at break even you haven't done anything because you have not been able to sell. But let's say you are able to do it, you are able to sell at 160, 170. You have kept your pending limit orders there so that when SL hits, it goes, it goes and hits. You never know whether there are other liquidity in between 150 and 160 where you're trying to sell. So you have to estimate where you would want to offload your liquidity so that your liquidity that you bought at 145, 10 units, you have to exit out of that. So there is another, that is another challenge. The only time in my opinion where this can make sense to do 
is when you have modeled key how much liquidity is available in the book, what is the size of probable, keep in mind, I'm saying probable SLs is, what is the probable size of the SLs? And if those SLs hit, the liquidity will get absorbed by these stop loss orders. And I'll be able to offload my inventory on that. That is one way of making money. So it's not as trivial as not simple, but nonetheless, with a model, it is possible. Just like you and I can look at a chart and create a probable estimate where the swing high and low are, where the SLs might be. Same way, any kind of machine and algo can make probable forecasts and can trade on that. But it's not that that big players know it. There's no deterministic answer to it. It's all probabilistic, just like any trader, right? So that's that's around the SL SL hunt. Does does that answer your question?